is 2099 BC. More than 4,000 years prior to the year you're watching in today. Around this time, many of my people travelled to what you call the UK, bringing new skills and ideas with us. Beaker people they call us, because of our beakers. Anyway, we knew how to find and make metal. We'd find the right spot, we'd mine into it, find the tin and the copper, grind it together and melt it over the fire. Then we could turn it into whatever we wanted. Bronze. Not only that, we're learning how to make, create yarn and wool so we can keep warm in your cold country. With these two new skills, we're able to farm more land, keep more cattle, more crops, cut down more forests and feed more of our own people. What's that? So how did we live? Oh, I've not got time for any of that nonsense. I've got a stone circle to build, don't you know? No, you'll have to ask your teacher about that. Well, thank you for that. Goodbye. We've been able to find out, out a lot about people from the past, not just through time travel as you saw there, but also through archaeological digs. Analyzing bones and what was found in the people's settlements as well. That's certainly true about the Bronze Age. Now, the Bronze Age, just like the Stone Age before it, gets its name because that's when people started to use that thing to make things from. Okay? They started to make things from the metal bronze. Now, bronze was used around the world previous to the UK, but the, U the Bronze Age really only started in the UK around 2100 BC. So that's over 4,000 years ago. Okay? The Bronze Age people were intelligent people, as you saw from the chat we were just chatting to. They weren't simple cavemen. They built homes. They weaved with cloth and yarn, as he mentioned, to keep themselves warm. They also, they would eat wheat and barley, so they would farm their own crops, and they would also keep animals too. So we've got the crops there. Now, with these animals, Bronze Age didn't waste anything, so they would eat them. They would also use their hinds to make some of their clothing and their wool, and they would also use some of their bones to make tools as well, so there was no wastage whatsoever in the Bronze Age. The weather in the Bronze Age had become a little bit wetter than it was in the Stone Age, actually. So it forced people to move down from the hills because in the Stone Age, they tended to prefer to be up on hills from a safety point of view. But because the weather in the UK was becoming much wetter, they moved down from the hills and further into the valleys, okay, because it was easier to farm here and also to find shelter. So rather than being up on the hills, they moved down into the valleys there. Okay. Religion was very important to them, to the Bronze Age people. Stone circles such as these were where they gathered for religious ceremonies. Okay, so the stones were very, very carefully placed. You can tell on that picture how carefully they've been placed. And it, the reason for that is because they wanted to measure the movement of the moon and also the rising and the setting of the sun. So that was very important to them from a religious point of view. And it would have taken an epic amount of teamwork as well, because they, we're not talking about small bricks here, we're talking about massive stones. And the only things that they could use to move them was strength, ropes, and pieces of timber, so logs essentially, to help them move along. So not an easy task whatsoever. Um, People in the Bronze Age, they were buried in man-made mounds. Uh, these were called round burrows. Okay, Often in these graves, depending on wealth, were, they were buried with gold items, some bronze weapons, and some pottery as well. Okay, So what they were buried with shows what the Bronze Age people really valued. And the chap who we were just speaking to was talking about the Beaker people. Um, pottery was important to the Bronze Age people, and if you had a very nice, intricate piece of pottery, that showed your esteem in society. So we've also got the burial sites there.
So our learning objective for today's lesson is to use prepositions to describe where things are within your Bronze Age settlement. We'll come back to this bit shortly. I'll tell you all about the Bronze Age settlement and what you need to do. But let's focus on the preposition for the my turn section of this lesson. So a preposition is a word that tells you where or when something is in relation to something else. Okay, I'll give you an example. People decided to build their settlement next to the river. Okay? So remembering that a preposition is a word that tells you where or when something is in relation to something else, let's read this sentence through again. The people decided to build their settlement next to the river. So, which word within here either tells us where the settlement was or when the settlement was? The people decided to build their settlement next to the river. It doesn't tell us when, but it does tell us where. It tells us next to the river. So the preposition within this sentence would be next. Now on that point, for this lesson, we are only mainly going to focus on the where preposition, so where something is. We're not going to worry too much about the when this. So now it's our turn to practice okay. together. Remembering that a preposition is a word that tells us where or when something is in relation to something else, I've written some of our where prepositions up onto the board, because remember we're focusing on those today. So we've got in, above, below, beside, through, next, under, and on. Now of course there are more where prepositions than this and I'm sure you can think of some and you can do some research on this as well to include in your work later on. Um, but these are just a handful to work with so far. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write down a sentence on the board and we're going to talk through the where prepositions within that sentence and then we're going to build it up and maybe do a couple of sentences together. So. Let's use, let's use Iggy, good old Iggy from Oi Cave Boy. Iggy, the Earth, trembled with fear as, can you guess what the end of the sentence is? As he walked into the pit. Okay. So, Iggy the Earth trembled with fear as he walked into the pit. We're looking for the preposition that tells us where something is in relation to something else. Okay, so the, the some things in this sentence are Iggy and the pit. So, the word that we're looking for is not actually on this list. He could be a tremble with fear as he walked into the pit. Which word there tells us where he is? Well done if you got it. It is into. So it's similar to in, but it is into. Let's carry on this sentence. He placed his things on a rock and gulped and gulped. There we go. He placed his things on a rock and gulped. Mm, where's the where preposition in that one? If you're unsure, look at our word bank up here and it might help you out. Well done if you got it again. He placed his things on a rock and gold. 
Okay, so it's just telling us where something is in relation to something else. So, our next one. <clears throat> See if you can get it as I'm writing this short sentence. There's going to be two. The no necks stampeded down the hillside and under the trees. There are two for you to get there. The no neck stampeded down the hillside and under the trees. Mm. One of those words, there are two words that we're looking for. One of them is in our word bank. One of them isn't, because as I said, there's lots of prepositions. So this is a, a, a different one. Have you spotted them? If you need to, pause the video and really analyze this sentence. Write it out if you need to. But the no neck stampeded down the hillside and under the tree. Under the tree, sorry. Okay, and finally, let's go for, because some of you did some wonderful fact files on these creatures. A great woolly mammoth. Watched on from beside the river. Now, ask yourself, which word in that sentence gives us some information about location? Where something is? Where was that great woolly mammoth? A great woolly mammoth watched on from beside the river. Tell us where something is. The great woolly mammoth was beside the river. So there's our preposition in that sentence. Well done. Okay, year three. That. So task one is to draw your own Bronze Age settlement. Now this is a lovely activity to do. Um, we're going to use the pieces of, of card that I looked at before to, to remind ourselves of the type of things that we want to include. Now we spoke about earlier the fact that the Bronze Age people moved down from the hills and into the valleys. So we're going to keep that in mind. We know that they grew crops of their own. We know that they kept animals. We know that religion was very important to them. We, knew, we know that they were buried in mounds, man-made mounds, such as this. And we know that they made their own clothing. So there's going to be need, need to be a textile kind of area. And we know that they made huts such as this. And in, in, in little clusters as well. So a family would usually have two huts such as this so one for sleeping in one for making things such as their clothing and also maybe um shearing some of the animals etc so i'm going to have a go now on the board i'm going to speed it up so you don't have to watch me umming and ahhing about my locations and then i'm going to talk about why i've put things in certain locations and remember yours might be a little bit different to mine Okay, boys and girls, so that was a little bit rushed um, because I know I don't, I don't want to keep you watching me for, for ages and ages. So I haven't coloured in 
all of my hills and things like that. But what I did do was I was keeping in mind the task as I was doing it. Because our learning objective today is to use prepositions to describe where things are within your Bronze Age settlement. That's the main part of this. So once you've done this wonderful Bronze Age drawing of your settlement, you are then going to explain using prepositions why you have placed things in certain locations, okay? So, if we think about mine to begin with, I started off with the river here. Mo most settlements in history have chosen a place next to a river because it provides food, we can, uh, water, we can clean in there, and it also provides transport as well. So it, it's, it's really fundamental. Um, I, I then placed the settlement's huts, the living area and the textile huts a little bit further away from the river but not too far and also within the valley of the hills, so quite central. I was then thinking that religion was very important to them and where would the stone circle go. So I placed my stone circle over here at the bottom of a hill because it's very important, it doesn't want to be too far away and also then put the burial mounds above the stone circle here, so a little bit further up into the hills. Then thinking about the textiles, now we've got the textile huts next to the living quarters, um, but they might also do some work up here too, so this might be a bit of a, a cleaning, washing, drying area next to the river. And then I was thinking they also, they were also very good at growing crops, so I've done it at the, the foot of a hill here and you can see in the lines that they're, they're growing the crops there. Again, it's not too far away uh, from, from where they're living. And then we've also got their animals at the bottom here. So I've put them right next to the settlement. Now, some people might think that might be a bit smelly next to a lot of animals, but they would have been very aware of predators that would have been roaming much more back in those days. Uh, so they would have wanted to keep them close to them. And also, they're next to the river. They've got a really easy supply of, of drinking water as well. Um, so, you might be sat thinking, well, I know that Bronze Age people would have this as well, which I really want to include in mine, which is fantastic. You might think, oh, well, they definitely have a big fire pit in the middle, which they definitely would, because that's how they, you know, they made their, their bronze and also how they would have cooked as well. So, you, when you're having to think about yours, you might decide your fire pit is going to go down here, and that's fantastic. Okay? So... Pause the video now. I want you to take your time. If you've got some A3 paper, then that's great. If you've got A4 paper, that, that's big enough as well. Um, I would probably say do it landscape. I've had to do it portrait just because of, of, the, of the board that I've got here. But landscape is probably going to be better. And uh, use the entire piece of paper if you possibly can. Probably say start off with your river and your hills. But as I say, it's completely up to you. So, look, chilly ones, your challenge is to complete the sentences about your settlement using the prepositions given. So, our, our first sentence that you need to complete is, In my Bronze Age settlement, the animals are kept, the houses to protect the animals. So, you need to choose the correct preposition, whether it's below, beside, or above. We've also got, the crop fields are the hills because the land is more even and fertile and finally we've got the round burrows so that's the burial sites are the stone circles so again either below beside or above i've got my bronze age settlement here to refer to and you should do the same if you need to alter these sentences slightly then you can do um depending on on the content so it might be that your round burrows are um, above or below the stone circle, but make that judgment call. Chili 2, your challenge is to use the preposition word map to write five sentences explaining your settlement choices. So this word map is going to be sent out to you on Monday to use. And I want you to refer back to your settlement map and then come up with five different sentences such as this. So it might be, I chose to put my stone circle above the houses so that the people could always see it. So in that sentence, 
my preposition would be above. So if you can underline it as well, that will show great understanding. Chili three, your challenge is to write a paragraph to explain your choices, including prepositions and adverbials of time. Can you underline each of these in a different colour? So my example down here would be, firstly, I drew the river. Then I thought that the Bronze Age houses should be next to it so that water was easily accessible. So choose two different colours. I'm going to go through, I'm going to use red for adverbials of time. So I've gone firstly, and I've also used then. So I've got those two. Firstly, I drew the river. Then I thought that the Bronze Age houses should be next to it so that the water was easily accessible. So I've also got a preposition in there and I'm going to use purple for that one. Okay, good luck. Can't wait to see the results. Off you go.